There you see the gantry is retracting. That's a good sign. It means New Shepard wants to fly to space. I've got butterflies I can only imagine if I were a kid with one of my postcards on board today, ready to fly to space and back. There you see the aft fin check. There are four of those. And there you see the engine gimbal check. Looks like a nice clear range of motion. From what I understand, we are all systems go, ready for launch. I think it's just about time to turn it over to Mission Control. It's go time, New Shepard. Recommend a hold. Flight concuss. Entering a hold at two minutes, 20 seconds. All right, I understand that we are in a slight hold here. And we have exited the hold. Resuming count. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command engine start, 2, 1. as she reaches her altitude you can follow along on the bottom left corner of your screen we have confirmed max q that was the uh the most intense part of flight on the rocket maximum dynamic pressure as we call it and a nice clean burn on that be3 engine go baby go All right, next highlight on her way to space, main engine cutoff, or Miko as we call it. Now, if you and I were flying on New Shepard right now, we're gonna feel those Gs come on. We're gonna, it peaks at about 3.5 Gs or so. But as we've talked about on uh, other webcasts, in the entire flight, you peak at about five Gs, but just momentarily on descent, in fact. And there it is, main engine cutoff. Great job on its ascent by that BE3 engine, a liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen engine. 
Design tested and proven here at Blue Origin. All right, we're looking for separation here between the capsule and the booster. And separation is confirmed. Those payloads are getting a nice ride this morning, experiencing those clean micro G's. And again, if you and I were up there, we'd be doing those somersaults, maybe a superwoman across the capsule. And I for sure would be gazing out those huge, beautiful windows. Now, as you can see from the altimeter, we're still climbing up towards space. But the speed is coming down, obviously, because we have turned off the engine. And in fact, you'll know when we hit Apogee, when the speedometer on the top right corner of your screen goes to zero. And there we go. We have passed the Kármán line of 100 kilometers, or about 328,000 feet. But continue our climb here, looking for Apogee. There you see the capsule on the left and the booster on the right side of your screen. All right, and we have an unofficial number of about 343,000 feet. Congratulations, New Shepard team, on your sixth flight to space. Now let's bring her home. All right, coming up shortly here, New Shepard is going to re-enter the atmosphere, which means, of course, that it's actually going to have air pressure for those control surfaces to push against to make sure that she guides her right, it, she's guided right back to the, uh, what we call our, our north landing pad, again, just two miles north of where she's taken off from. But shortly here, we're going to look for the wedge fins to deploy. And the wedge fins are out. All things looking nominal. You may recall those wedge fins are housed up in the what we call our ring fin. As the rocket's coming back down, the air is flowing through that ring fin, centralizing the pressure, and that keeps the rocket nice and stable and straight as it's coming back down to land. And of course, the wedge fins also help with the stability of the rocket as she descends back home to Earth. Next, we'll be looking for the drag brakes to deploy. Those are also housed in the ring fin, and that's gonna dramatically cut the, uh, the speed of the rocket. They, in fact, do most of the work in uh, cutting the speed of the rocket as she comes back into land. And again, then we will look for the firing of the BE-3 rocket, I mean, sorry, the BE-3 engine, that is, that will slow it to just four or five miles an hour and then she touches down. There are the drag brakes. Touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepard. A beautiful launch to space and back. Man, 
to think that that is its uh, its 11th consecutive landing. It's almost like landing rockets become commonplace. I mean, it never gets old. Let me get let me get that part straight. But man, that is exciting. All right, the show is not over. We, of course, are waiting for visual confirmation on the capsule. There she is, and the drag brakes have gone back in, as well as the wedge fins. Man, she just looks like you could fuel her up and go again. What a beautiful, beautiful launch and landing from New Shepard this morning. And there is the New Shepard capsule. The drogues have been deployed, and there are the main parachutes fully inflated. Almost poetic, that smooth descent under those big, beautiful, colorful parachutes. And a very stable 15 or 16 miles an hour, she descends back into the valley. Let's wait for her touchdown. Keep in mind that retro thrust system is gonna fire just in the last milliseconds. It's gonna kick up some dust down here in Texas. And we're losing it in the fog, but let's capture it again here. Here she comes. And touchdown. Just beautiful. What a spectacular launch to space and back. The six for that capsule, the six for that booster. Congratulations to our New Shepard team. Congratulations to our payload customer. It was our pleasure to give you a ride to space and back. We can't wait to do it again. I know that they are heading out to go check out their payloads and start crunching on that data. I have also seen our landing safety operations and recovery team. They have just departed over my shoulder. Of course, Caitlin Dietrich is in there as well. She's gonna go uh, give you some Instagram stories as we open up that hatch and check out those payloads. Look at that capsule. Man, I'd wish I'd been on board today. Okay, unofficial statistics for today's launch. Apogee, 343,061 feet. Maximum ascent velocity, 2,227 miles per hour. Our mission start time, 11.53 a.m. Central Standard Time. And mission elapsed time, 10 minutes and 16 seconds of rocket excitement. <laughs>